accompaniment. You're playing on a lot of sessions. What's your do's and don'ts for a harmonica player to uh, serve the song? Wow, that's a tough one, man. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think first and foremost, you were hired. Uh, so come in with all your right tools. Try to get as much information as you can out of the person who is hiring you. If you can, get some of the music, if it's possible, if this is an overdub, ask that director to get you that information so that the first time you walk in there, you may want to try it in a first position, you may want to try it in a second, you may want to try it in a third, but the moment, and I'm old school, moment that we're in there and they're rolling tape, they're going like, you know, they're, they're going like, oh, what's he doing? Where's, what's he trying to find? Mm -hmm. I think it's good to be definitive, to know the right approach to the song and what it is that you're going to add that's going to make a difference and why you're hired to do. And uh, so um, take your tools, get as much of the uh, homework ahead of time as you can, um, and then listen to what they want you to do. Uh, a lot of times that I feel like that um, when I produced, um, to get the feel, uh, I didn't, they're not listening to me. And so be a, be a very astute, you're hired to do something and they're, you're, the producer is there for a reason. They're, they're reaching and trying to achieve something that you may not have a clue about because you're just a small little piece of the whole puzzle. And so be, be very attentive to what they're doing and ask them if you would like them to play it different ways. And um, sometimes, depending on the producer, um, they're very headstrong about what they want, and sometimes there's a lot of latitude. Once you play it this way, once you play it in this position, once you know. So, I, you know, to know the people, and you gotta understand the relationship that you have. But be prepared, mm -hmm. and be bring all your tools. You don't want to come into the studio and go, well, I had that harp and <laughs> uh, left it. So yeah. um, that's my recommendation for people, particularly if they're wanting to get into it, the studio work. And let's be clear about it. I mean. The reason why there's studio work is because those people are the best, and we, you know, we call them um, uh, in the business. You know, it's it's uh, you know you get triple grade scale, uh, or you don't, and um, and the people that get triple grade scale are the ones that are prepared, are attentive, take direction, on time, do their work. It's a business. Take care of your business. Get out of their way, and wait for the next phone call. Hmm. And uh, that's my approach to it. Nice. When you're working with vocals, is there a way that you approach that? I know each song's a little bit different, but do you sometimes play the melody with the vocals? Do you do some type of chording, add some rhythmic chucks? On the harmonica, you play fills? I mean, what's... Well, I'll tell you, I don't do any chucking because my brother told me a long time ago, stop doing that. <laughs> so I'm a little sensitive to doing it. Uh, occasionally, you know, if I have a horn section playing with me, uh -huh. um, um, you know, a great harmonica player too, Kaz Kaznoff plays with me a lot and mm -hmm. sax player. And so a lot of times if Kaz is playing with me, then, you know, I'll hear something, I'll jump in there and, mm -hmm. and do some horn parts. But cool. um, again, I use that analogy of that old, you know, piece of pie and how sweet and how good it is, but too much is an overdub and it, it, it overdoing it. And so I, I am not much of a chugger. I will occasionally find, and if you listen to records, I will listen for holes and pockets where I can add. But if you have, let's say a still player, that voicing mm -hmm. is not good together. Mm -hmm. And so unless you have some contact with that still player, as well as a sax player, those voicings again. B3, I can work with. Uh, I, I just, I've felt like there, there's not a duplicative effort there. It, but man, still and sometimes sax, you got to be real careful about those things. And I try to, I try to have eye contact or be aware of what somebody else is doing. And my, my melodic sense is going to follow that melody to some because it's the root. And if you're not being melodic, then you're losing the cohesiveness of the melodic sense of the whole song. I mean, if you have a melody and you're playing something that's not even tied to the melody, mm -hmm. I, I don't know where you think that that's really good for a song structure. <laughs> so I think, like you say, it's the melody in the melodic sense of playing something that is melodic and complementary is, is usually important in, in playing a song. Oh. So when playing with a steel player or a uh, sax player, is it more about 
making a decision about who's going to take what holes where, or is it more of range? You might even choose a different harmonica to be mm -hmm. in a, <coughs> excuse me, a different position so it gets yes. you higher or lower. Yeah, my timbre, if I can get my timbre up above, and I, you know, I think for all of us as harmonica players, uh, when you're playing on live stages, not so much acoustically, but I can tell you that it's been a fight um, because I get louder and they get louder. And it, it just <coughs> goes on and on and on. And they seem to have 11 on their knob, and I only have 8. And I'm, <laughs> I'm kind of stuck where I am, you know. Um, but uh, uh, I, I think a lot of it is talking, too. And particularly if you're not playing with people a lot, it's like, hey, because I, I don't ever play. And this is one for you. Don't ever play on the first verse. Don't do it. That's the vocal. Remember. We're all supporting the vocalist. We're not supporting a harmonica player. I know it's hard to believe, but it's not what <laughs> it's there for. Yeah. It's to complement the band. And I never take anything on the front end in terms of feels. I don't. If a still player feels like he needs to do that, that's his business. But I have never played hmm. on the first verse of any song. Hmm. Um, I'm to come in. I'm to be the ad. I'm I'm the thing that's supposed to you know, capture the ear. Well, well, it's sad. Well, I didn't, I didn't see that guy where they're playing harmonica. Hmm. And um, so I think that's you, you've got to be sensitive to that in the structure and the composition, musical composition that you're doing. Um, and so it's either we're going to talk about it or we're going to, if we're playing a lot together, it's like, you got it. I got it. You got it. I got it. You know, and just know to remember that it is the vocalist and you're just to support the vocalist. And if you play over the vocalist, then you're not in, well, you're probably not going to be working very long with mm. that band. Yeah. You, know, you won't be called back. And, and uh, certainly, I uh, know with my brother, um, we call it the Leroy Eye. And, uh, <laughs> uh, and I'm not the only one that's gotten it in my life. And when, yeah. when you've seen that look, you know, yeah. hey, lay out, bud. Lay out, this yeah. is not for you. Do you follow the same approach for a guitar? Like when a guitar goes to take an extended solo, you lay out for the first time around and maybe kind of swell underneath them and I swell will, and help them build? I'll build up. Yeah. When I feel <laughs> that something is brewing, uh -huh. um, much like a volcano, let's uh -huh. say, it's yeah. an analogy, you know, you know, if you see the smoke and, you know, you, you, you see the earth is starting to shake a little bit and, you know, maybe a little spew of lava is coming out. You know fix, something's fixing to happen. And you want to take that and crescendo that up and make that pinnacle moment where it does, it should reach you emotionally, should reach the audience emotionally. I mean, everybody understands that dynamics are hugely important. And when the appropriate time, you bet, hmm. jump right in there and get into the bottom underneath of that and um, um, build it on up and uh, particularly uh, um, make sure everybody else is going too. Let's go. And, uh, <laughs> yeah. um, but uh, absolutely, uh, the, the crescendos, the dynamics, and that part of it is hugely important for a player to know that there are times that it is important to, to be the pusher, get it out there, and, and they go, oh, wait, you know, this guy's going somewhere. Hey, I didn't know that. I'm going to go with him. And uh, for me, I have found it more, David, for me, I have found that my, my band members will follow me. And I'll try to build that up. And that, again, is part of your style of your play. You shouldn't give your best thing right out of the box. You should say something and, and be melodic with it, and, and you build on it. And what I find is that um, harmonicas done right, probably, are, in my experience, I've had a lot of people that will, you know, sometimes they'll almost overpower me because they're in it too, and they're, again, they have a ability to have a volume that I don't have. I mean, uh, we all know that we have a feedback issue, and um, so you've got to watch how that is, and so volume is really important, and for me, volume is super important. I like to play quietly. Um, I like for there to be dynamics. I like drummers to play with small sticks, mm -hmm. because he's the one that's, or she. Mm -hmm. I've got some uh, wonderful, uh, women uh, uh, drummers out there that play with me pretty awesome but that drummer sets the tone for the volume or the volume I should say not the tone but the, but the volume of the band bass players can come in and then you know 
I need to be respectful of that too because, you know, you always want to be heard. Everybody wants to be heard, but um, fatigue of your ear is no fun and you'll lose your audience and you don't want that. You want them to be collectively interested in what you're doing and staying with you and when you see them leaving after the first set, uh, you're probably doing something wrong. Uh, they're tired. Um, it's too much. Um, leave the meter, you know, look at your meter of your songs, look at your variety of the way you're playing those songs. Make sure that those are things that are complementary. I'm going to play more hard driving straight eights um, and stuff towards the end of a set, at least. I'll build up to it. So when I leave the stage, I want them wanting me to come back hmm. and go, yeah, that's really good. And uh, hopefully sell some merchandise and uh, so on and so forth. <laughs> yeah, got to take care of business. Yes, you, you do.